like they forget to tell you. Episode 57, I think, or 58. I'm not sure. Well, how can you not be sure? Because I'm so discombobulated lately. Oh, that's a big word. <laughs> so, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Well, how can I help you not be discombobulated? See, what I normally do is I have like a whole thing where I, uh, as soon as we're finished, I upload it to Podomatic, which is the podcast platform. And so then I'm, I'm, always, I'm always aware of the number because I have to upload it. And I haven't been doing that. I've been slacking. Slack eyes. Because I've been updating my book. And, oh, that's what we talked about. I'm updating my book, and it should be done this week um, on Amazon. I'm trying to, I'm doing it on uh, the ebook format. Well, there's an ebook. So it's just a little bit difficult because it's like I have to teach myself all these things. I'm not a publisher. You're not? No. Hold on, wait. <laughs> so there's actually something you don't do? No, I don't. Pu- yeah. Well, now after this, I can add that to my list. But no, I do not know. So I'm teaching myself as I go. There's a whole different format. Oh, it's a lot of work. So? Hi. 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 We're back. Welcome back. You have the bun again. I do. The bun is back. The bun is The back. messy bun. I, well, it wasn't so messy today, but I don't know. It's back. And you have the... Not bun. No today. bun. No, no bun. bun. No bun. No bun. So, welcome back to episode fifty-seven Something. or eight. Or nine. We will. We will make we'll sure know that. for sure next week. Yes, um, we were supposed to have a guest this evening, and that got canceled. So, we uh, want to talk about a couple things. Well, she doesn't really want to talk about a couple things, but I think it's necessary because. It's part of the journey, and um, there could be some other people right now experiencing something similar or about to experience something similar, and it's always good to know signs and, um, you know, different things to, to do with the subject of seizures. So your mom had another one yesterday. Mm-hmm. And this is probably, we've lost count because this is happening a lot. Um, again, for our newer viewers, her mom, my aunt, uh, is in palliative care for year number three, and she's been dealing with this disease for 19 years. Yeah, but she's past three. Oh, it's past now. Yeah, we're in, we're into the fourth year. Fourth year of palliative, if that's even, well, obviously it's something because she's in it. So, um been experiencing a lot of different uh, seizures, or I should say, were they similar? Is each seizure different? I don't know how this works. No, it's, I guess, um, because it, there's different types of seizures, and I think people are just assuming it's the reg- like the convulsive seizures. She doesn't have those. So mm-hmm. they're very mild, um, and it doesn't last very long, but it's still like it's in her state. Mm-hmm. Like she's probably like 50 pounds, if she's that. So it's always concerning if she has one, right? Because right. it could be her last one. Okay. So, you know. Yeah, that's never an easy thing to watch or even, you know, just know that that's happening. I mean, okay, so I guess maybe we can touch on a couple things for people like myself who don't know much about someone experiencing a seizure. How do you know the onset? How do you know you don't? It just Not in, I think typically you could do that in a person that, doesn't have dementia because you can ask them questions um probably the best person probably would be to ask Monique because I think um her daughter suffers from that too okay but like typically I think you can ask what do you what do you experience before what do you experience after like you can kind of diagnose that way but with someone who's nonverbal, you don't know very very difficult to well you don't know like they can and they come at different times so it's not even like a set time it's sporadic so it could be a couple months she could not have any she could even go for longer periods and then all of a sudden she's having some and now it just means it's weird because she is 
the one medication she is on, and that's because um, her palliative care nurse suggested it is like a anti-seizure medication. So it's just weird that she's even having seizures on an anti-seizure medication. Okay, so if she wasn't taking the medication, what is it just she would just be having more of them? I assume so. I'm not sure. Okay. We have no way to know because she can't give us a speech. She can't dialogue, right? right? So it's, you know, it's just guessing without information. And at this stage, really, it's just to make her comfortable because we don't want her to experience a seizure. But, I mean, really, we're not trying to diagnose right. and, you know. Yikes. Okay, so, and again, she, there's no way of, you know, communicating with her to find out if she's in pain or distressed or, you know, but you do, you have said that after a seizure, she seems to be very tired. Oh, yeah. Extremely knocked out. Like, even yesterday, like, very weak. Weaker than normal. Like, yeah. she's already, like, you know, weak. But, yeah. Okay. And how long generally do they last for? Less than a minute. Okay. I mean, it's over quick, but it's just... Very traumatizing. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, on to the next thing. Well, my little one upstairs is <laughs> having his own little meltdown. But it's okay. Brother and sister up there um, trying to save the day. Um, foundation. What's going on with the foundation? I haven't talked to you about that in a little bit. So this last uh, little, yeah, there's a lot of things. Like there's a lot of moving parts yes. in the background. So it's trying to multitask. Um, trying to get, um, well, I sourced out a spot and it was just trying to figure out uh, what it's zoned for, so I found out today. So the things that I'm thinking about putting in there uh, are go. So hopefully, uh, I might be signing the lease this week. Okay. And it's in Georgetown. Yeah. So for all of our viewers, um, Brampton, Mississauga, Georgetown, Orangeville. Milton. Milton. GTA. Yeah. Halt Halton. Halton and Peel. Okay. And what can for now, for now, but that doesn't mean you know, whatever we put in there, it doesn't mean you can't access it. Right. Right. Okay. And tell us more about what is involved. What is your vision? What is, what is this going to be for the viewers that don't know what it is that you know you're putting together here? Well, I'm trying to. Okay, so basically, um, as much as my mom has Alzheimer's, uh, there's a lot of places that deal with Alzheimer research and um, day programs and somebody to help the actual person suffering from the disease. And yes, I said suffering. Give me that phone. Keep going. So what I'm trying to do is instead of focusing on the person that's suffering with Alzheimer's is to focus on the person that is taking care of them. So um, for caregivers, there's there's, and there's different types of caregivers. Obviously, there's formal, which I am not a formal caregiver. A formal caregiver typically is somebody who's paid to look after um, a person that has an illness. And in this case, let's say if it's the person that has dementia or Alzheimer's. I'm not a formal caregiver because I don't get paid. I'm an informal caregiver. So this, this place would be for people who are informal caregivers and formal, you know, if you need resources because there's a lot of fallout that happens, especially with dementia because it's a brain disorder. It's a brain disease and it's very challenging, especially in the beginning because a person is not, they don't understand what they're doing and their behavior is extremely challenging. You know, they'll ask questions over and over. They're very repetitive. They can go, they can wander. Um, they can be aggressive, uh, apathetic. Like it, that could all be in one afternoon. You can experience all of that. And so on a caregiver, it's extremely challenging to deal with that behavior. And, and harder, more so, of course, if it's a spouse or, you know, your parent, you know, it's very, very, very challenging. So it's a safe space for a caregiver to vent because a lot of times, you know, you feel guilty about complaining, um, but you are human. So I wanted to start a foundation to get 
um, caregivers support because there are none. Like the government doesn't supply. I know people, a friend of mine even yesterday, he said, hey, you know about that caregiver credit? Yeah, I've known about it for 19 years, but I cannot access it. It's very convoluted and I haven't been able to access the caregiver credit even though I am looking after my mom in that capacity. There's all these stipulations. This is a foundation to get caregiver support, so like a private uh, respite care for them. The government does, supplies very little hours, so a lot of time you have to pay out of pocket for care if you'd like to care for somebody in your home. There's no, there's no um, subsidies for that. That's crazy, and it's super expensive. I mean, some of the costs that you were telling me that you have had to incur just for basic minimum things that your mom needs, it's like, not everyone can do that, you know, it's... And people think, there's not even like, um, I don't know what people, but there's no option, I don't know, I guess the worst case scenario would be have to go on assistance if you couldn't work, but there's no employment credit when you're taking care of somebody. Right. It's not like that. There's nothing. So if you work, you have to provide care for your, your loved one. So this is why, and of course I did, you know, I did all the stats. I did the research. Caregivers save the healthcare system billions of dollars. So if, if people weren't looking after or putting these supplementary hours, but it would really, um, the, the devastation of the financial, the economy would be like, it, we would be devastated by the amount of money that the government would have to shell out if, if there weren't people taking care of their parents or loved ones at home. Right. And I don't think uh, caregivers get enough credit. They don't. Well, that's, it's not even, you don't think, it's they absolutely don't, you know. And it's bringing awareness to this because it needs to be addressed. It needs to be, this needs to change. Well, and then you get, and we, we've met people along the way. So then you get people who now their loved one has passed on. And let's just say you've used a significant amount of time taking care of that person. So in Bill's case, right, like he took five to six years, like looking after his mom, he's an only child. And now he was, he's displaced from the workplace because that's five years of his life. And now, you know, he's depressed. He has now his own health issues because that's what happens when you're a caregiver. You, you, you're last on the list. Worse for me or anybody in the situation like the sandwich where you're a, a parent and you're looking after your parent because you're, right. you're definitely last. So then your health suffers. You go through depression, um, alienation because a lot of the times, you know, your friends don't really understand. They can be kind of empathetic, but they really don't get it. And it, then you typically what, what a caregiver will do is just isolate. And, you know, Bill and I have written about that. You know, you don't have any friends to go out with. Because your situation is so different. Right. And you don't want to be, you don't want a sympathy party, you know. So it's, you, as a caregiver, you really go through a lot. So if a parent passes, then you're displaced, and then now what? what? What do you do with your life after? You have to pick up the pieces on your own. So just getting caregivers the supports, like maybe grief counseling, um, counseling to assess their compassion for their burnout, what they'll experience in along this journey. And... Um, it's, I don't know. This is why I, I know there it's it's much needed. There is no foundation out there for caregivers. Like there, there's foundations that do caregiver research, compile stats, but that's not what we need. We already know there's an issue. So we need to get done. Like so stuff for us and the Alzheimer's societies. I know they have support groups. And I, I spoke, I had a talk at Amica um, on Saturday and same thing, like there's no counseling. So, you know, uh, have support groups and that they asked me, you know, did you take advantage of those support groups? I don't even think that they had support groups at the time when my mom was diagnosed, but even if they did, um, personally, I will not want to go into a group to discuss your problems too. Like that would not be helpful yeah. to me when I'm going my own thing and it's individual. I don't want to hear about your, you know, I don't want to feel worse about myself. Right. 
like maybe you have it worse than me and then you know compare who has it worse I wouldn't want that wouldn't be helpful to a group support but that's me um, I just think one-on-one -on -one counseling it and and I, I can tell because after the talk individually people were coming up and asking me things because they don't feel safe you know right. in a group environment to ask these questions well, it's personal and it's right. unique and, and, and you don't want to talk about that. husband or you don't want to talk about your wife right and you don't talk about it in a group setting because again it's stigmatized so you know anyways that's my little okay spiel so of why so in terms of this foundation opening do we have a date do we have what can no, we do no we don't have a date okay i have to I ha I'll know once I sign the when I can look at the date. Okay, and how can we help speed up that process? Uh, well, we could donate to the foundation. Okay. That would help. Perfect. So, again, we're doing the, the beanie campaign still, mm -hmm. right? Beanie campaign, and it's perfect time because it's freezing out there. Yeah. How much are the, the beanies? $25. $25 for a great cause, um, and we, you can leave a message for Karen or for myself, um, DM, is it, uh, DM, well, we did this last week, it's the DM Sorry, it's <laughs> in the inbox, um, you can leave us a message and we will definitely get your order in, you can custom make your order, um, you know, did you already make this? Yeah, you ordered the color hat and color logo you want, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Um, outside of that, is there any other way that people can donate if they just want to help out a great cause? On the Reinvent and Restore Facebook page, there is the um, foundation link of our platform that we're using, chess.org. Okay. And it will take you right there and you can donate directly. You can transfer to Reinvent and Restore Foundation at gmail.com. It goes right into the foundation bank account. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Get this one, guys. It's a, a great job. Um, and you won't know until you need it. Like, so try to be a little bit proactive rather than reactive. Yes. Because, yes. you know, you don't want to be me. I'm team you. <laughs> don't be me. Don't be me. Although you look really fabulous. Like, you're oh, looking yeah. fierce and oh, okay. Right. But that's and not, you should have seen. No, you don't want to see. You don't want to see. You don't oh. want to see when you can't, when I couldn't get out of bed. You don't want to see that. Yeah, no. Let's. Let's not do that. Um, so, we're gonna cut it short today, just because uh, you know, things going on, and you know, we need to talk about a couple things off camera. We were a little needing some attention as well. Why don't you bring him down? Why don't I bring him down? Since you know. And in the meantime, what? why don't you allow, or maybe fill in other ways that people can donate, or um, you know, give us, give the viewers. I want this campaign. To get well, off, once I get popping. once I get the um, the book, like I revised my book, so my original book, Alzheimer's: What They Forget to Tell You, um, you know, it was available. It's still it's available right now at Barnes and Noble, Indigo, uh, I Amazon's, all the Amazons. But I revised it with updated information, and I've added to it because. When I wrote it, I think I was 13 years in, and it was published in 2014. So I have now, you know, the journey has extended to 19 years. So I have a lot more information, and I've updated the information because some of it's not relevant in today's world. So I've also, um, I also last year uh, was published my second book, which is Dementia and the Brain, What They Forget to Tell You. And it was a German, it is a German publisher. And so I'm going to re republish that book on Amazon as well so that it, it, people have more access to it. I think it's a very relevant book. It talks about, oh, look who. It talks about? It talks about a more um, textbook-ish uh, version of dementias and the brain and how you can actually get dementia. There's a few preventative um in a few, there's a, a bit of information on preventative uh, ways that you can kind of alleviate um, dementia. I'm just a little bit distracted right now <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, there's a baby on board. Yes, we do what we need to do to get it done. Um, so, 
the second and I'm just gonna talk off camera just so that you know we can keep this going but the textbook that you had said that this is the second book you wrote right yeah and that is available on it will be will be because like right now it's a journal publisher and it's in euro so it's not very conducive for this for here yeah okay. so I'm gonna try to bring it to this market okay and you already covered on how we can get what is it they can tell you on Amazon but even though I wouldn't get it right now I'd wait okay and uh, part of the proceeds I'm going to be putting to the foundation as well perfect I really want to get this done with this I really do I think it's essential I think it's something that everyone can benefit from and it can be beneficial to you you know and it's also, like if I put it like you can download it. It's two nine. It'll be two ninety nine to download the ebook. Ah. So you know. I don't even know how that works because I'm one of those you know. You get, you get it. You just download the app, the Kindle app, on your iPad. Okay. And then you can read your you can read books. So instead of just going and buying the actual physical copy, you can just read it on your iPad or your phone. That's the new way now. Wow. Yeah. Get with the times. Right. Well, I don't know. I like a physical book myself. I like to touch. I like I'm tactile, so. Yes. Okay, so we're almost ready to do our big. Are you going to make a dinner? Yeah, baby. Okay. I'm just trying to put some food in them so that you guys don't look like we just freak out. <laughs> the things we do, right? Okay, I think we're good. <gasps> I'm sorry I'm so blah today. I, I feel very blah today. And that's because, you know, every day it's a day-by-day -day situation with my mom. So, you know, I just, I'm always just on that prep mode of, I don't know if how much longer she can really withstand this disease. Um, she's like just skin and bone right now. So it's very heartbreaking. And anytime there's something like a seizure, it's even, you know, you're just very heightened. That's how I'm feeling. I'm feeling a little off. Yeah, I can tell. Okay, we get it. All right, well, here's the newest member of our team. Sorry if he spits up. I just tried to put a little bit of food in him so he wasn't so grump grump. <laughs> He's looking at himself. <laughs> you say hi. This is the little guy that was in my belly. You say hi, baby. Say hi. Yes. Hi, big boy. So this was the little one that was making noise upstairs and well in our He looks like he's really looking. I like think he's he is. Really, he's really Could you just say intense. hi? <laughs> yes, so um it's funny because I think some of our viewers watched his entire You were in labor. You know what? We did a podcast and you were in labor. And the day later he was born. So I literally was in labor. But I found out that uh I was pregnant with him, I think a day before we did, I don't remember the number of the podcast, but yeah, this entire journey of his life creation was um, during last year's podcast, so that's kind of cool to be able to look back on, but um, this is the little man. Yes. Say hi to everybody. Hi. Don't eat my finger. Okay. So on that note, um, I'm going to do more. Is he sleeping? Not on camera. No. That's no. another Yeah, uh, We're not going to pull it right now. Um, thank you guys for the support and Aww. continuous, you know, shares and comments and stuff. It, it, it's very appreciated and it never goes unnoticed. So we're grateful for that. Say hi to Auntie. Yeah, hi, Auntie. Yeah, you need to pick up. <laughs> You're drunk. Say are hi, you? Auntie. Are you? Yeah, you What's are. What's I staring at you? I know, you can't help it. <laughs> Yes. Makes you feel better, Auntie. I know. Yeah. I know. I know. If you yeah. want to talk now, okay, we'll save it. In about fifteen years. Maybe this is my debut. You can make it. You can this make is my it debut. debut. All right. Anything else you want to add? Nope. We're good to go. Good to go. All right. So we'll see you guys next Thursday. Um, same time, same place. Be well. Be blessed. Thanks, Thanks for, for tuning watching. in. It'll Peace. be better next week. <laughs> I promise. All right. Bye.